Benjamin Tal is Deputy Chief Economist at CIBC Capital Markets. And Benjamin, uh, that's obviously where most people feel this. Um, it, it would change the rates of some of our debt, and that would be problematic for some people. So let's just start. You heard what Jay Powell had to say. Your reaction to, is he trying to calm the market? Is he not saying enough? Uh, it's, it's a fairly strong reaction to his remarks today. Absolutely, because the market is getting nervous about inflation. Yes, he's telling you that inflation is not coming, but he doesn't know. Nobody knows. We are talking about a significant increase in uh, GDP growth in the U.S. Uh, following the $1.9 trillion injection of money into the economy. That can be inflationary, especially in the service sector. Again, nobody knows to what extent inflation will pick up. He's trying to basically uh, be calm about it. But uh, the market is starting to get a bit more nervous, and we see it in the long end of the curve, clearly a factor here. So we do have nervousness out there uh, by a lot of people. Investors would be the first, right, to say, do I need to rotate out of certain assets? And obviously, in, in the bond market, that'll be already happening for some time. Where do we need to worry when it comes to mortgage rates? We saw a little move last week because of the five-year in Canada. Uh, should mortgage holders be concerned, especially those, we've talked an awful lot about them, uh, Benny, that are at the margins, that have mortgages that are just what they can afford, uh, although they should have been stress tested because that's now the rules in this country, were they stress tested enough, I guess is the question. <clears throat> yes, and that's a very good question because the power of monetary policy is asymmetrical. When you have uh, low interest rates and they are going down, the impact on the market is not very significant. Uh, however, when they start rising, you have a huge increase in uh, activity, and that's actually a very negative. So the power of the Bank of Canada or the Fed is asymmetrical, very ineffective when you cut rates from low rates, but when you raise interest rates, you are very powerful. The impact of um, higher interest rates is very, very significant. So this asymmetrical picture is very significant. Listen, we have a generation of Canadians that never experienced high or even rising interest rates. For them, those extremely low mortgage rates, that's a given. So it's not as exciting as it used to be. But when they start rising, you know, and people say, yes, but they are rising, but they are still very, very low. I remember in the 1990s, they were 12 percent, irrelevant. 100 percent of debt taken in this country was taken in low interest rate environment. The minute you start raising interest rates, the impact on the market will be very significant. Yes, we are stress testing them, but uh, when interest rates are so low, even following the stress test, you still are asked to pay relatively low interest rates, and that's the test at this point. So, I mean, I like to say nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition, uh, Benny. The thing is, the only people who know that reference do remember inflation. Uh, it, people who are like, what does that mean? Never heard of Monty Python, uh, have never experienced <laughs> inflation. When, when Jay Powell says, don't worry, low inflation doesn't change that fast, uh, is he right about that? Or historically, does inflation kind of come as a surprise? That's a very good point. Uh, you know, I actually check in the Oxford Dictionary. It's still, the word inflation is still there. So it does exist, although if you are under <laughs> 30 years old, you really don't uh, know the meaning of this word. Yes, uh, the point here, Amanda, is very important. Maybe the disease is also the cure. What I mean by that is that when interest rates are st so low and they're starting to rise the way we are seeing them rising now, the effectiveness of this increase is very significant. One 100 basis point increase today is equivalent to 200 basis point increase 10 years ago. So it's a very powerful tool. So the disease is also the cure. And that's why you don't need much to increase interest rates in order to slow down the economy. And by the way, while we talk about inflation, one of the reasons why the 10 year rate is rising is the fact that the market is now expecting the Fed to move in late 2022. Just recently, we were talking about 2024. And when uh, Powell tell you, tells you, you know, it will take a while before we start touching interest rates, a while might be uh, late, maybe the third quarter of 2022, and the market is starting to react to it because you see uh, the long end of the curve is starting to rise, not just because of inflation, real rates are rising as well, reflecting uh, changing expectations regarding the Fed and the Bank of Canada. And it's those real rates, obviously, that will concern us. Um, I did want to touch on a, a piece of this story here that may be slow moving and maybe it's not a big concern. But again, it's a bit of a wild card. If you're the federal government, you have maintained now is the time to borrow. We could never do it at better rates. That's all been true, right? Hundred year bonds from Central American countries can go at low rates these days. 
the market will decide when Canadian bonds should become more expensive. Is it worrisome in this kind of environment? Uh, and should our federal government be thinking now about deficits uh, in a way that they maybe even weren't six weeks ago because the market may push us? Absolutely. I think that's a very valid point. And I'm sure that uh, all those smart people in the Treasury and uh, the government are now looking at ways to basically fix uh, their debt to minimize the damage of higher rates, because clearly that's what's going to happen. The market will decide where the rates are going. However, uh, the Bank of Canada <clears throat> has a tool. And this tool is either quantitative easing, and although we expect the Bank of Canada to reduce quantitative easing in the April meeting, we are also uh, suggesting that there is a real possibility, if rates continue to go up, that we might see in both Canada and the U.S. Uh, what Japan is doing, basically yield curve control, to make sure that you minimize the damage and you control the long end of the curve until you are ready for it. I want to talk about uh, household debt. Uh, not just the national debt, which will also, uh, there are implications there too. What happens as rates rise to overall indebtedness levels historically? Well, if you look at the effective uh, interest rate facing a uh, household, is at a record low, no big su surprise. Basically, how much interest we pay on the debt, as you can see from this chart. So this is the story. Uh, what it means, however, that again, the minute interest rate starts rising, uh, we have never been so sensitive to the risk of higher interest rates. And this is a major issue that we have to expect. And the five-year rate mortgage is starting to move. And the impact, as I suggested earlier, would be very significant. So not only governments, but also households are much more sensitive to the risk of higher interest rates, more than double sensitive than a decade ago. Very, very important. And that sensitivity means consumer spending is affected. Exactly, because we are spending more and more money on uh, servicing the debt and less on consumer spending. So this is disinflationary, but also anti-growth. And that's exactly what this chart is telling you, that the effectiveness of monetary policy is rising, as I suggested, doubling uh, over the past decade in terms of the impact on consumer spending. And that by itself is disinflationary. And therefore, I'm saying maybe the disease is also the cure. The increased sensitivity to higher rates will have such a significant impact on economic activity and basically derail inflation when it starts rising.